and uh, today we'll try to cover rest of the network function and other aspects of the 5G core architecture uh, for one hour. And uh, in the second hour, we will uh, switch over to 5G quality of service, how quality of service is managed in 5G. So uh, today will be very, very packed sessions one after another. So let's continue. So I'll try to cover all these aspects. Uh, additional five more network function that is NRF network repository function. AF application function. Authentication server function, network exposure function, network slice selection function. Uh, we will also talk about uh, the service based architecture. 5G service based architecture. Yesterday's session, uh, we talked about reference point architecture, which even Mr. Tejpal was pointing out that we uh, use, uh, we can use cloud native uh, network functions. So that we will be covering today. And since it is service based architecture, then we'll talk about service interfaces. We will also look at uh, the roaming architecture of 5G. In case of a roaming, how the architecture will look like. Then we will also cover the data storage part. Data storage part uh, in 5G. Every network function will not have its own data storage, but data storage will be a common. And in 5G, there is a concept of non 3GPP access. That means even the landline systems or other broadband systems can be connected to uh, the 5G core. So we call it non 3GPP access. So within that we will talk about untrusted non 3GPP access, trusted 3GPP access, 5G residential gateway access, wireline access, fixed network residential access. And then we'll also talk about uh, 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 some devices which do not support uh, 5G on non 3GPP side, but still they can connect. And then finally, we'll talk about ATSSS, that is access, traffic, steering, switching, and splitting. So it's a very lengthy topic today, but we'll spend some time on each of it. So let us start with 5G service-based architecture. Yesterday, the architecture which you saw was a reference point architecture. Today, uh, this picture, if you see, uh, this is a uh, service based architecture. So yesterday we had talked about user plane function. If you recall, we had also talked about uh, session management function, but policy control function, access and mobility function. Uh, and the UDM unified data management. These five network functions we had talked about and ran part those uh, radio related aspect we have already covered and this is your user equipment. So today we'll try to cover uh, like NRF application function. And SSF AUSFF AUSFF etc. So before we proceed to these network function, let me uh, tell you uh, as we were discussing yesterday that in case of 5G, uh, the component or the network function which handles user plane traffic has been segregated. So this is the lower portion a bit highlighted. You can see it is the user plane part of it. When I say user plane, I mean all the data traffic related to the user flows onto uh, this plane itself. And here itself yesterday we spoke about PDU session. So in this area itself, a PDU session gets created. The upper part is your control planes. All control related uh, functions are taken care by the control plane. So now you have distinct control plane and distinct user plane, and it is different compared to 4G because in 4G, some of the network functions who are doing uh, functions related to user plane as well as control plane, whereas in 5G, it has been completely segregated. So user plane and control plane has been separated. So this has enabled that this portion, the user plane portion 
can be located near to the user. Right, so your control part can be centrally located. So normally today in India deployment is either central or zonal. BSNL has zonal systems. Some of the private operators have central. But with 5G, uh, the user plane part can be located near to the user. So that will allow better latency and also uh, local services to be offered to the users. Now in this service based architecture, the next important thing which has happened is that the hardware and software are disaggregated. So what I mean that up till now in 2G, 3G, 4G, when you buy these network functions, there will be a purpose built hardware and software supplied by these OEMs like Nokia, Ericsson, Siemens, etc. And you have to always go to them for any expansion or the new network function. But in case of 5G, you can buy hardware from any generic hardware, uh, commercially off the shelf hardware. And on top of that, you can actually deploy uh, these network function as a software. So if these all these network functions, PCF, SMF, AMF, is nothing but a software application, software application which can be deployed on any hardware, any generic hardware. So that is what is the difference. So this has also enabled deployment of 5G network function onto a virtualized infrastructure or cloud infrastructure. So telco can have their own data center, own cloud, or even they can hire uh, services of private cloud services like Amazon Web Services, or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud Services or any local. So in India, there are a lot of data center has come and they would be offering uh, their data center for any commercial use or application. And we call this architecture as a service based architecture all because every network function exposes some service, exposes some service which can be consumed by any other network function, right? So a network function is a producer of a service and also it, it may be a consumer of service being offered by other network functions. So it is just like a web service or, or, or API based service, right? So this interface is called API interface, right? So now there is no point to point interconnection which we saw earlier in a service based architecture. It is just a uh, a producer of service and consumer of service and they can talk to each other on API. So that is the concept of service based architecture and they talk to each other on API interface. Even if some outside application want to talk to the 5G network, they can do so on the API itself. There is a network function called NEF. So this exposes network exposure function API outside and any other system can connect to the 5G network. So example can be suppose you have OSS operation support system or business support system BSS. Uh, those would require certain logs from the 5G network, certain data from the 5G network. So they can connect to 5G network through API uh, through NEF and use that data. Similarly, any third party applications, if they need to be part of the network, they have to connect through NEF, network exposure function they can connect to. So this is uh, the overall concept of service based architecture. Uh, do we have Tejpal Singh ji uh, today in the meeting? Yes, sir, I am here. So I think your point is getting answered, right? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, there was confusion when we, we see two reference architecture. I was looking from the implementation perspective. So how practically uh, it will be implemented? It's very important to understand the reference point architecture. Then only we'll be able to appreciate because in a API based architecture, you may not be knowing uh, that which network function will require what kind of service from other network function because all are connected to each other. So and for what purpose they are using. So uh, 
we need to uh, explain that first and then come to uh, sir sir is there any significance of using this capital n then udm uh, just to have similarity between the reference point uh, uh, so nomenclature that, uh, name so they have just these are just name of these interfaces these are just name of the interfaces the okay. thing is you can, you can give any other name but in a standard these names are given right these are nothing but api interface right uh, sir uh sir in case of 2g and 3g also the billing system is used to connect with the network using the standard uh, uh, connections so what additional benefits nef is bringing on the table for the 5g okay so nef is like so uh, if you know about api based interfaces it becomes very very flexible right in the sense that it is kind of platform agnostic for example if you look at uh, our aadhar system uh tejpal ji knows that our authentication services are uh, exposed on api so whether the other party is on window platform or linux platform or android platform doesn't really matter you can just fire an api call so it becomes a platform agnostic that is number one security on a api call it, it, these are normally we call it restful api right so if you ask what is your name it will just tell the name so and and you may not be able to enter inside the network for any other uh, wrong purposes so some security aspect is also taken care one once you expose your uh, data or or log onto the api so that's a generic a generic benefit of a api based interface you can google it a lot of uh, uh, uh. so today even the upi which we see the banking revolution upi in india that is also api based interface we are able to connect so many banks on api and even the google pay uh, behind can be any bank and you can you, you are able to use so that's the beauty of upi that entire banking system in spite of being connected through various apps are safe and secure and they are able to do wonder right so that's the advantage uh, sanjay is it okay yes sir yes sir okay so now we will talk about nrf yesterday i had spoken about a little bit about nrf nrf is network repository function so basically it stores detail of all other network functions so whenever a new network function is installed or created it has to register into nrf when it registers so its ip address or its uh, fully qualified domain name and other profile data is actually registered into nrf so it has got kind of a directory or index of uh, uh, all the network function if a network function has multiple instances so every instance uh, is registered kind of and also i mean network function uh, may undergo certain change or modification during lifetime so whenever there is a change or modification it has to register again with the nrf so nrf will always have the latest information about all other network function so this aspect we call it service registration in the nrf this and it of course maintains the profile of those network function and number of instances now the next is the discovery part suppose one network function want to talk to other Sir? network function yeah excuse me sir uh, sir this uh, who allocate this nrf uh, ko, any nodal agency or uh, because uh, it, it may be a unique feature for, uh, no, no, for the network for function for uh, uh, keeping the detail of all other network functions kind of a directory so it is part of 5g core whenever when you install 5g core nrf is one of the network function which you have to make it up uh, i mean initially this will be the first network function to be made up because it has to register all other network functions this is the first one which comes up and then other network function will come because in our uh, 2g or 3g uh, network scenario we were uh, allocated some so kind of gt for any any device any network okay. element let me so, let me tell you that for 2g 3g 4g this nrf was not required because 
an RF is only required when you have some kind of service based architecture. In case of 2G, 3G, there is a point to point interface already available, which I spoke about 5G yesterday. That point to point, every network function is connected to other if required. Here, network functions are not connected. They are on a common bus and they have to talk on API. So where other network function is located and all is not known, right? So an RF is important or necessary in only in the 5G environment, not in the 4G or 3G or 2G. OK, so let us not. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, sir. So now suppose uh, network function one want to talk to network function two. So it will not directly uh, uh, talk to network function two. First, it will talk to NRF. So that we call it discovery and ask about the network function. And this will give list of suppose it, it is want to talk to AMF. So it will give, give the list of AMF with their profile. Now this network function can decide which network, which AMF it want to connect to. And then since now it has got all the addresses, it can actually have an API call with the uh, uh, identified AMF. So that is how an RF, uh, what is the function of an RF? This one yesterday I had discussed while uh, discussing that. But uh, this will, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this will. Uh, this will uh, cause uh, impact on the load situation. I mean, every time if it is receiving a list of uh, names uh, and along with the IP addresses, not names, but the uh, IP addresses, and it has to select that which IP address it has to communicate to, then it will inad inadvertently uh, lead to load uh, more load in that node. So basically, uh, it may not be required so frequently. Suppose once a uh, network function has discovered uh, the correct network function, then it will continue to work on that, right? Uh, in some cases, where, wherever required, wherever uh, the other network function feels that it has to take the list, it will take. Otherwise, once it has taken, it will continue to uh, do API call with uh, the respective uh, uh, network function, right? So there will not be much load. But and what is very simple? It's very very simple protocol, right? So uh, I don't think it will create any additional load or any load unwanted load. yeah please go ahead what's your question no 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 uh, uh, i was just thinking that if that node in the meantime has gone down with which it was communicating then again it will have to fetch that list from that nrf yeah but yeah, yeah. first it will uh, first it will detect a failure from that node and then again it will be going for um a fresh list uh, <laughs> yes it so, will be requesting a fresh list from the you are right. You are right. So this is just like any IT system, any uh, network system. So they are also suppose even in browsing, you you have to do a DNS query and all, right? It's a similar similar process. I in IT world, such processes are very common. So it's nothing new about 5G. It is just an IT thing which which is, which is being adopted here, right? So it's a standard process. Right. Now let us talk about the next network function, which is network exposure function, NEF. And they said that NEF is for exposing the capability of 5G uh, to outside world. So, so it exposes API outside uh, the 5G network function. So maybe uh, different services will also use. For example, one I talked about OSS and VSS, which may be required to uh, talk to 5G network for information. There can be services, for example, IoT services or V2X services, which are third party services. They will also connect to 5G network through the NEF, right? So that means it exposes the capabilities. May I request to mute your mic? I think somebody's mic is on. <laughs> May I request uh, to, uh, yeah, thank you. And the second is that security aspect of uh, uh, exchanging the information with 5G. 5G network has to be secured. So through exposure through NEF via API, we will make it uh, much uh, secure. And then finally, it, it also act as a translator because on an API call, so there may be a, a different way of interacting with the third party services, it will convert into a, a kind of 
language which 5G understand, right? So it's a kind of translator also. Sir, okay, next. Yeah, please. Uh, sir, the, the 5GS is connected to the external world via the uh, data NEF. network also and the NEF also. So what is the difference? Okay, so when I say data network, so data network uh, uh, is is kind of uh, so you are saying services, right? So normally, I'll I'll just explain this here in the. So here, what you see this application function, right? AF, this application function can be part of 5G core network. That that means it can be inside 5G core network, or it can be outside so suppose this service is being offered by the same operator so it can put inside the 5g code and suppose this is a third party application so this may be a gaming service or air vr service being offered by third party in that case it will be outside uh, the core in that case it will it will connect to 5g core through nef through nef so although and this data network, this data network are those data network which are part of the 5G network itself, right? For example, if they have their own internet or some service, so this is part of that. So basically, there is a thin line between application function and data network because suppose it is an IMS for voice service. So IMS is outside a third party application, maybe owned by the same telco. So this is one of the data network, one of the data network. If it is owned by uh, the uh, uh, the same operator, then it will form part of the core network itself. Otherwise, it will be outside. And, and this data network can also be on to the edge in the sense that it will be near to the user. So for example, if it is a gaming service, so that application will be near to the user. So application functions uh, and data network are more or less same depending upon who is offering this service. Sanjay, I don't know whether I answered your question. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is next network function is network slice selection function. So all of us know that 5G has a concept of network slicing. That means you can create uh, virtual networks for different services within the 5G core. Right? Maybe you have a one slice for offering voice services, other slice for offering autonomous car, next slice for offering smart meter service and so on. So you can have multiple number of slices within your 5G network. So how to handle that? So there is a network function called network slice selection function which so the function will be that which which network or which network slice instance is to be selected for a particular user so for that purpose it assists amf because amf is the point where user connects and then it also determine whether a particular slice is allowed or not and the third function is that it assists to allocate appropriate AMF for the required slice, all because the AMF can be different for a particular slice. There can be uh, multiple AMF that will form part of a slice. Suppose there are five slices, so in every slice there may be a different AMF. So the proper AMF selection is also done by I mean, NSSF help in doing that. So this is the broad function of network slice selection function. An application function I talked about. That application function means any service uh, will be offered through application function capabilities. And application function role is also in influencing the traffic. When I say influencing, in 5G there is a concept of edge computing that means the user data some of the user data can be offloaded onto the edge itself and some part of data may be required to go to some central system so 
this influence on traffic routing whether it has to be local breakout or it is to be sent to a central server is also uh, i mean application function support in doing that along with the pcf policy control function and then application functions will be accessing the network through nef which we discussed in the previous slide an application function also need to talk to policy control function why all because if this suppose application is a kind of a ar vr service and it will require a certain quality of service so this information it tells to pcf policy control function and accordingly policy control function will talk to smf and smf will actually uh, uh, provide quality of service through the upf so that's why it also gets connected to pcf and that's why if you see that uh, the pcf is connected to data network and application function in the overall architecture and then you have authentication function it is very very similar to uh, a previous generation so it's a, just an authentication server for the authentication purpose and all the security proce procedures which happens on the 5g it <coughs> does that <coughs> so those were five network function i talked about but there are many other network function if you go to uh, the specification document which i have uh, uploaded on team so there are many so we'll just uh, just uh, look at that AUSF we talked about amf we talked about data network we talked about now there is one network function we call it unstructured data storage function so basically 5g also support unstructured data mainly for the purpose of supporting iot services and all so it has got an uh, a network function nef we have talked about nrf we have talked about and this is network slice specific authentication and authorization function so uh, with the name itself it becomes clear that when a user is entering into a slice there is a next level of authentication and authorization within the slice also so you have a network function there and this we talked about nssf pcf also you have spoken smf also udm also and then you have unified data repository which i'll cover in the upcoming slide upf we have talked about there is one network function called uv radio capability management function uh, in the previous session i had talked about uh, ewp bandwidth part so that means all uv will not support the entire band so some uv will support uh, a particular uh, frequency band so uv have got certain capability so this is the capability management function so once a system knows that what is the capability of a user equipment accordingly resources are allocated af we talked about uv you know and then uh, we have radio access network ran we have talked about and then equipment identity register your eme details are here and then you have data networks analytics function so this is very important so here all those ai ml aspect can be actually deployed once you have huge lot of data coming through the network and there is a network function you can deploy ai ml uh, related functions and of course you have a charging function not only that we have uh, a network function called non 3gpp inter working function which is to connect uh, non 3gpp access which we'll talk about similarly we have trusted non 3gpp gateway function wireline access gateway function trusted wireline uh, inter working function then we have service communication proxy and security edge protection proxy some of it we'll talk about in upcoming slide so there are many network function and this is up to release 16 15 and 16 combined in release 17 which was just released some more network function has been added so let's go through that so we talked about service based architecture now let us have a look at service based interface the concept the broad concept this picture is also taken from the specification document so in 5g 
suppose this is network function A and this is network function B. This may be AMF, say this may be SMF, for example. So every network function is producer of some service, right? And, and it may also be a consumer of some service. So in case it is in producer and this service is required by network function B, so it will request, give an API call and it will give a response. Request and response. Similarly, in this, uh, in this case, this is the producer. Net network function B is a producer. So uh, it can be consumed by network function A. So one is request reply. Other is kind of a uh, periodic uh, information, so notification kind of. So in that case, you have to subscribe. This network function subscribe to a service, and whenever that event is happening, it is getting notified. So this is a kind of a service-based interface, a generic one, which is implemented in 5G, and that's why we call it service-based architecture. Now the next point is, roaming reference architecture. So how uh, in a roaming scenario architecture will look like? So this picture I have directly taken from the specification itself. I'll just uh, uh, explain to you a little bit. In case of a roaming, the two network, this is the home network and this is the network where a customer is visiting. So we call it VP element and this we call it HP element. So there is a new network function added, which is called security edge protection proxy because the two networks are getting connected on some interface called N32. So there is a security requirement, right? So we have SCPP installed both sides. And this example of roaming is, we call it local breakout. When I say local breakout, what I mean, suppose, a user which who belongs to this network has come to this network roaming here in this network right so now suppose it is accessing data so in this case what happens that the data is handled here in visited network itself so it goes to its upf then data network and whatever service it is uh, asking for the visited network is offering that service. So this is called local breakout. That locally the customer is being served. But one important aspect which is different from 4G is that the authentication of this user is in fact done by the home network itself. The decision of the home network on authentication becomes the final, which is slightly different from the 4G where decision was being taken by visited network based on certain vectors which it receives from the home network. But in 5G, the complete decision is taken by home network. So this is also a security enhancement in 5G. So this is an example of local breakout. There is also concept of home routed. In this case, what happens if the user of this uh, network, HP element, it has gone to a roaming network, VP element, and want to access data. So in this case, what is happening is the services are being given by the home network itself. So that means the two network gets connected. Control part here N32 interface and user data goes on N9 interface. These two UPF of the two networks gets connected. So actual services are being offered from the home network itself, although I am in a roaming environment. So this is called home routed uh, roaming architecture where data traffic is being routed to the home network itself. So both kind of architecture is possible in 5G. There is one more addition that when you connect these two UPF, it is not straightforward, but certain uh, security aspect has to be taken care and and for that there is a concept of ipubs in between coming so ipubs is nothing but inter plmn user plane security function some security aspects are built in and then those two upf are so you, those two upfs are not being directly connected 
but they are being connected through IPUBs on the both side. So that security aspect is taken care. No third person is able to enter into the network. So this is called home routed roaming architecture. I was talking about data storage architecture. So in case of 2G, 3G, 4G, what used to happen that whatever network function you are having, corresponding data storage war was within that network function. In case of 5G, you have a separate UDR <coughs> data repository, unified data repository. So be it subscriber data, policy data, structure data, application data, those are in a separate data storage schema and all the network function, for example, UDM, PCF or NEF, if they have to access certain data, they uh, access it from the UDR itself. For example, the subscriber data belongs to UDM, so it will have access to uh, subscriber data. The PCF, the policy data is for PCF, so PCF will have access for policy data. NEF may have uh, 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 exposure to a structured data, maybe CDR or any other aspect which it has to pull. So uh, it will have access to those data and so on. So your data storage is decoupled from the network function and it is altogether a separate, just uh, an IT world architecture 5G has followed. Now I have uh, come to non 3GPP access. When I say non 3GPP access, what I mean is that the 5G core can connect even the network, say landline network or any broadband network or Wi-Fi network, right? So I'll just explain to you uh, 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 how it functions. So three types of non-3GPP access we had seen. One is the untrusted, other is the trusted, and third is the wireline. So let us talk uh, about them one by one. So look at this picture very carefully and try to understand. So assume that this is a untrusted non 3GPP network. So normally 3GPP network you have uh, you have G node be here or we call it 3GPP access and then you have AMA, FSM, all network functions are inside, right? And here you have untrusted non 3GPP access. Let us assume that this is a kind of a Wi-Fi, right? So the Wi-Fi network can actually become part of the 5G core, can connect to 5G core and any UE, suppose uh, this is user equipment, 5G user equipment. Now it has got two options. One is that you can connect to G node B and use. Other option it has that it connect to the non 3GPP access and in this case also it can connect to 5G core. So, so what happens in this that you require a new network functions called N3IWF. N3 is non 3GPP, IWF is interworking frame. So which converts the protocol of non 3GPP access into the protocol which uh, the 5G core network follows. Although here it is shown in a reference point architecture, but you can have even the API based uh, call between, between them, right? Wherever uh, it's possible. So what exactly happened is that a tunnel is created for control signal, a tunnel is created till N3IWF and UV is able to talk to AMF on the same N1 interface, same protocol, and this non 3GPP access becomes transparent. It just gives a tunnel, just gives an IPsec tunnel for the control signaling. Similarly, for data also, a, another tunnel is created up to the N3IWF, and from here it connects to the UPF. You recall that, right? For user plane, this is the path from here to here. So non 3GPP access becomes very, very transparent and, and the data traffic can go here. So now let me again uh, explain you that the user device here can connect to 5G core 
either through the G node P or through the Wi-Fi or non 3G PP access. And it is possible that it can connect to connect through both the access simultaneously in one go and it can enjoy double the data, double data rates or it can connect to one of it. So that is also a possibility. But interface for the UE remains same in one interface here. For connecting to AMF and for. This untrusted also when it's connect to N3 IWF, it is again N3 interface towards UPF. So this is the concept. Any question here? Uh, I have two questions, sir. Uh, my first question is uh, when a uh, user do the uh, viral roaming, uh, how how it's decided it's a local breakout or home rooted? And my second question is uh, this tunnel is uh, in this uh, in this 5G coordinate in this slide. Uh, this uh, ten I this tunnel is uh, uh, N N W. Or uh, Y2, uh, or both are the tunnels, Y2 also. And uh, tunnel is used for only for the uh, data plane or for the signaling also. Okay, good question. So basically, for, I mean, UV has to talk to AMF because AMF is the entry point for UV. So uh, since here it is some other access, so what it does that till N3 IWF, some kind of tunnel is created for control signaling. And then uh, N3 IWF transparently, just like G node B, passes it to AMF. So basically, this is the same N1 interface which was there with G node B through non 3GPP access by creating a tunnel. So that is for control. For data also, for data also, a second tunnel gets created up to the N3 IWF and from N3 IWF there is a standard N3 interface which is also there from G node B to UPF similar and the data traffic goes in the user plane. So the tunnels are IPsec tunnels are till N3 IWF both for control and uh, uh, the data. This Y1 and Y2 interface are specific interface to talk to this non 3 gpp access right so initially before tunnel gets created the ue has to talk to this non 3 gpp access so there is there will be some capability built in the ue by which it will talk to the non 3 gpp access initially and non 3 gpp access will talk to n3 iwf so this uh, this is a kind of a control signaling uh, between ue and non 3 gpp access non 3 gpp access and N3 IWF. For that, Y1 and Y2 uh, separate interface are provisioned for. And then your question was about roaming, whether uh, how to decide whether it's a local breakout or home routed. So this will be decided by the two operators, right? So two operators, when they will have roaming agreement, they will decide that whether uh, uh, they will have local breakout or they may have a home routed or they can have a mix of the solution. Okay, sir. Sir, uh, sir here uh, one more question. Uh, like you said that IPsec tunnel will be created. Sir, uh, as per my understanding, uh, for uh, IPsec tunnels are used for the security of the uh, user data. And for this signaling purpose, one time we do the uh, this authentication, like you explained also that we use the APA algorithm uh, to for the uh, authenticate, which you explained about the MC. That one time it is uh, its authentication done. So first one question is ki, uh, in this UE, how, who will decide that it will be connected via 3GPP network G node B? Or via N3I uh, work uh, n 3 iwf node, and uh, it's uh, for uh, UE for uh, every time it do the connection, every time it has to do the authentic uh, do the make connection with the both the network or uh, 
how मतलब how it's decided service मतलब every time service based or uh, once the uh, user equipment get uh, switched on uh, it remain connected with both the network. So very good question uh, from you. So there is a there is a concept called AT triple S. And this I'll talk about in after two three slides, so it will become clear. Broad answer, what I can give you is that it's a it's the it's the capability of the uh, uh, the 5G core when uh, operators are able to build. In that case, what will happen that there is may there may be a possibility that when user gets a better signal uh, of say either G node B. Or say non 3 GPP access, whichever is better, you will actually connect to that and use the data. That is number one. Number two, it is possible that uh, uh, that if I am moving from one place to other place, from my home to say office, so initially I may be connected to the home Wi-Fi, which is a non 3 GPP access, but when I step out, at that point of time, my signal becomes low for Wi-Fi and becomes strong for G node B. So there may be a smooth handover from non 3 GPP access to uh, the 3GPP access. And the third point would be that I, I, I am being offered data from the both access parallelly so that my data rate becomes higher. So all the three possibilities are there. It will depend upon the network operator what what all they have implemented and what all they are offering to a particular user. Thank you. Okay. So these are texts you can read later on. Uh, uh, this is what I explained. So now the question is that earlier I said uh, trusted, non trusted, non 3GPP access, and now I'm talking about trusted non 3GPP access. So the difference is that if the same operator, so for example, at our home, in my uh, uh, home, I have uh, geo fiber. So Wi-Fi, which I am getting, I'm getting from the geo fiber. And I am also have a geo mobile phone. So when my voice call is routed through geo fiber network, in fact, it is going through a trusted network as far as geo is concerned. So that is a kind of a trusted run 3GPP access. And suppose other example is that mobile I'm having from Geo, but the Wi-Fi I'm having from say Airtel. Then also my voice is being offloaded onto the Wi-Fi you might have seen. So this, this uh, traffic is going through a kind of an untrusted uh, non 3 gpp access as far as Geo is concerned, right? So they deploy a certain more security aspect. So this architecture which you are seeing is similar. The only difference is this is the trusted non 3 GPP access. And if it is a trusted uh, non 3 GPP access, uh, then uh, it is easier for an operator to uh, deploy because it, it is kind of its own network, but we call it trusted non 3 GPP access. So here you have the gateway function and you have access point. That means your mobile has to connect to this network and also uh, this access point has to talk to core network. The rest of the functionality which I discussed in the previous slide will remain same. Uh, sir, a question here, a basic question here. I mean, uh, uh, how are UE decides whether the Wi-Fi is trusted or not trusted? I mean, uh, how it decides whether to uh, create an IT6 channel or not? Yeah, or it so will do the... Yeah, please yes. go ahead. So these standards are already what? defined. Uh, so UV will look for non 3 GPP access and 3 GPP access. And, and once it is able to latch to non 3 GPP access, uh, the non 3 GPP access will show that which P elements are available to be connected. For example, uh, uh, which I mean, those configuration will be there in the non 3 GPP access also. So it can select if it knows that the PLMN uh, is being offered is 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 the same uh, on which the mobile is also operating, so it becomes a trusted one. If it is be, being offered some other PLMN, then that means it is a non, uh, I mean, kind of a untrusted one. So other kind of protocol will run. 
Uh, so is there is this intelligence built within the UE? I mean, at that. Yes. Uh, uh, UV, yes, uh, you are right. So the UV has to have these capabilities. So the UV which are being supplied today may not have this feature. So unless mm. a <laughs> latest version yeah. of UV you have, that may not work. This happened even in the 4G. You may be recalling that mm. some of the phones are able to support mm. voice uh, call through Wi-Fi and some of the phones mm -hmm. are not able to offer. All because of that version of the phone, right? Earlier uh, phone right. versions were not having. Mm -hmm. Okay, similar. And uh, why another question? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. No, no, sir. You are saying something. So I have come to the next slide. If you have any question, please go ahead. Uh, 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 one is, uh, uh, what is the um, parallel to ANDSF in 5G? I mean, in 4G, we used to have a node uh, ANDSF, which was a part of EPC core, uh, which used to select uh, uh, which uh, network it has to, uh, which node it, uh, network it has to, and it has to launch. So is there any uh, similar in 5G architecture also? Which network function I is spoken about? Which network function in 4G we a spoke about? Sir. Pardon? ANDSF. ANDSF, uh, access network discovery and selection function. Actually, the ANDSF used to assess the user equipment to discover the non-3GPP and the 3GPP access. Uh, which one to latch to, whether Wi-Fi, WAC, LTE? So here, uh, as I said, so is no, there anything similar? So there is there is no separate uh, similar uh, network function. This uh, non-3GPP IWF itself will uh, do that. Perhaps uh, I have not seen okay. a similar network function as you talked about, right? Okay. 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 So the 5G can also connect uh, uh, a wireline 5G access network. So in this example, this is 5G RG, a residential gateway which supports the 5G, right? So it mm -hmm. can connect to 5G network or port either through the G node B or through a wireless access gateway function. So this is a 5G kind of a device, 5G access gateway, which will be there in our uh, core network and where residential gateway can also connect to it. Basically, it is just uh, near to the UPF. It can be installed. So the residential gateways can also the 5G residential gateway. The use case for 5G RG can be a fixed wireless phone. So kind of it will become a kind of uh, a wireless fiber. You can say that uh, you have a wireless fiber, so 5G RG. In case you have a physical connectivity, you can also connect to the 5G core through this interface. Otherwise, you can connect through the Z node B. So this is a concept of 5G RG. So there is some text you can read later on. And this is fixed network RG. The difference here is this is a general fixed network residential gateway, right? So it cannot connect to G node B because it will not have the N1 interface. The residential gateway itself is not supporting N1 interface. So on behalf of uh, this residential gateway, this wireline access gateway function will actually do the N1 and N2 signaling. So it is not earlier we used to create tunnel for N1 interface, but since the this function itself is not supporting N1 interface, so this particular function does that work. So this is kind of a any fixed net network residential gateway being connected to the 5G core. So what we discussed that all kind of access can be connected to 5G core through a intermediate non 3GPP access function, uh, which is, which I explained to you. Now comes the AT access, huh? which uh, uh, yeah, please go ahead. Some question here. Sir, uh, um, any interface is available uh, through which this 5G core can be connected to a 2G RAN or a 3G RAN so that um, 
uh, whenever the this 5G rollout will be there, so uh, 2G or 3G uh, network can also be connected to this. Uh, okay, so either so through answer, network slicing or something, some mechanism. So the answer to your question as of now is no. So whatever I talked about these solutions, I'll just a uh, uh, little bit explain more that in USA there are residential gateway for broadband. One is based on a uh, 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 cable network, right? So there is a organization called cable uh, cable lab or something. So residential gateway, we call it CRG that can connect to 5G network. Then uh, we have a broadband forum. So based on broadband forum, they have a residential gateway. We call it BRG. This can connect to 5G and then Wi-Fi, our normal Wi-Fi can get connect to these are non 3 gpp So only these three kind of access and of course 5G residential gateway, a new type of residential gateway. So these are four uh, kind of access which gets connected to uh, 5G as of now, not your 2G or 3G RAN as of as of today, but 4G can be connected. So 4G connection would be possible. Okay. Because uh, why I am asking, sir, uh, this 5G can also work on 900 megahertz uh, frequency. Frequency and, uh, is not, not an issue because uh, to support 2G and 3G, whatever re is required towards the core and all is not there as of now. So as of now, I'm saying as of now, only these four type of uh, non, uh, uh, options are available. So okay, it's not there as on today. Okay, ATSS. ATSS is your access traffic steering, switching and splitting. I spoke about it and I also gave the same example that suppose you have a 5G network and also you have a Wi-Fi, 5G and Wi-Fi. So Steering means ATSS ka pahla wala is steering means it will select the best network. If it is 5G, then connect to 5G. If it is Wi-Fi, then connect to Wi-Fi. Then the next S is your switching. My example of going to office from home that if you are moving from one place to other place, so your 5G signal may weaken, Wi-Fi signal may improve. So uh, handover will happen, seamless handover. So this is your switching and this is your splitting that your data can go through 5G as well as Wi-Fi. So you are aggregating the network. So this is a kind of ATSSS which came in release 16. Yesterday somebody sir, was I talking about. Yeah, yes, yes, please. Sir, in here is steering and switching. Both are doing uh, the same work. Even the steering is also which one is the best it, it is choosing and the switching also when we are no, moving switching. from home when I'm to saying switching when i'm saying switching it is the handover but yes yeah. handover data but call yes. you got my point so, so if you switch on your mobile uh, so it will select the best network right so that's we are uh, uh, saying as a steering right but it's steering switching is also happening now, sir Pardon? But steering, switching is also happening. Sir. Which one is the best? It will switching to that network. <laughs> so switching, if you say switching, steering is inbuilt, right? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> if you say switching, steering is inbuilt. If you yes. say splitting, so everything is inbuilt, right? Yes, correct. Sir. Okay. Sir, uh, I have one question, sir. Uh, on... yeah, please go ahead. Uh, sir, uh... Uh, this or uh, the steering part uh, is this the facility uh, to be taken or to be executed by the uh, 5G service provider or even the Wi-Fi provider can also uh, enable this facility. Like in sir uh, in USA, uh, Google Fi services uh, is available by Google. So in which the services is being provided and switching is being uh, done from 5G to the best available Wi-Fi or uh, vice versa. So my question is that uh, uh, whether the 5G service provider is uh, able to switch the traffic or Wi-Fi service provider can also be able to uh, to to make over the handover. So basically, if if you make it as a trusted network, so uh, 
no, it belongs to the same operator. Otherwise, it will act as a untrusted non 3 GPP access. That is also so in both cases it will be possible. Suppose it is just in Wi-Fi, normal Wi-Fi, so it becomes an untrusted non 3 GPP access, and these aspect will happen. If it is a trusted one, then uh, I mean they can deploy a certain more uh, configuration because this Wi-Fi backend will also be connected to the same network. Got my point? Yes, sir. I got it. OK, so now this is a, uh, just I wanted to show yesterday. There was a question about interworking of 4G and 5G core. So the same specification which I have shared with you uh, is also uh, having an architecture wherein 4G core and 5G core can interwork in a very, very smooth way. Rather, deployment would be possible that you can deploy HSS and UDM together, PCF and PCRF together, SMF and these gateways together. So, so these are the architecture and there are interface defined between 4G and 5G, for example, between MME and AMF, there is a N26 interface. So this interworking architecture is also defined in 5G. Now there is a concept of SMS, right? So in 2G, 3G, everywhere we had SMS and SMS actually is, is transmitted on the signaling itself. So 5G will also support that. And for that, they have a SMS function, a new network function called S, uh, SMS function, which, which they will be deploying. One more aspect in 5G, which is called 5G LAN. So generally what happens is that suppose a corporate want to have a wireless LAN kind of environment, then they can approach an operator and they can uh, deploy this configuration for that corporate wherein uh, the traffic. So, so wireless traffic within that corporate will be routed with the local UPF itself, like here itself. It will not go outside the UPF and here itself uh, it will be routed. So there will be a local switch kind of. And suppose that corporate is having presence in the multiple city. So similar network they will have in multiple city and they can connect these on a new interface call in 19. So there is a concept of 5G LAN also. So today we have wired LAN. Now you can have a kind of a wireless LAN also. This also came in release 16. So with this I close the 5G core part and the next session is on quality of service.